everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to turn 27 of Pokemon Gold, where we are playing Cameron the Photographer, God of Sea and Wood City. Uh, let's jump into the turn. So last turn was the first turn that we had been back for several weeks because of the uh, bugs and the pauses. Uh, so we're getting back into the swing of things, but we're having to make some quick moves um, because of the political situation that's going on around us. Um, so let's just see what happens. So we got a, another rock high school. Um, that's really good for us. We didn't find any magic sites. That's unfortunate. Um, we have taken control of the province of Griffin Rock. Our forces met no resistance, but there's an enemy fort. Um, and the fort is breached. So this is the Saffron City Fort that we are moving on top of. Uh, Saffron City is basically not fighting us at all. They're trying to fight against Olivine as much as they can. I don't know how... I don't think there's much left. They had a massive army that they marched into Olivine's territory, but I think that army is pretty much dead now. Um, so we've got a bit of patrolling in Viridian City, which should take us down to zero unrest in Viridian City. So that's good. And then we've got... 45 shield abras promoted. We don't even have 45 shield abras, but we've got shield abras that are promoted and we've got 45 things that are promoted. So uh, the uh, the promotion can get a little finicky. Um, so we've got a bunch of different movements going on. So um, not really fronts to, to look at yet. Um, I guess there's the, the saffron front, right? So... Let's take a look at that, I guess. So we have basically moved Chuck onto Griffin Rock. Griffin Rock is a very valuable province for us, partially because it has this great gold mine, which is 100 gold per turn, and partially because it's uh, got decent income, um, a decent population. Uh, we wanted it originally, but Saffron beat us to it, so we basically just accepted impassable mountains instead. Um, but we're, uh, we have breached the castle and we're gonna storm this turn and we're doing so with a very basic kind of concept here we're doing we're basically just relying on our prodigies we're gonna do a divine blessing a fanaticism right so same thing as sermon of courage but it affects everyone so we're gonna be blessed and we're gonna be pretty high morale right um, and then Chuck's going to summon Earth Power and probably start Strength of Giantsing. Most of these guys are probably going to be gone by the time he actually starts doing that. In fact, he's way back there, so I need to push him up a little bit. Um, but uh, really, whatever happens after the Divine Blessing and the Fanaticism is probably not going to matter. We're going to have 120-ish um, sacred units in here, and we've got this little... Chaff army down here, a bunch of Furious Wipers. We've got our Cold Combatants, which these are going to be very important potentially for fighting the Steelixes. Um, no, those aren't going to be in this battle or anything like that. Honestly, I'm not expecting there to be anything here. Maybe a few uh, units that got left over. Okay. So we should have Griffin Rock next turn. Great. Fantastic. We'll take it and we will move onwards towards uh, Saffron City. Or towards Omicria, right? We might ping uh, Will Rid and then head into Omicria. Um, I'm not sure, right? So what are what else are we doing? We're not really doing a whole lot else as far as reinforcement or mobilizing goes for Chuck's army. We are actually going to be recruiting a Cienwood City nurse here, okay? Uh, and that nurse is going to be traveling with Chuck's army for the purpose of basically doing what a nurse does, and that is being a healer, both a disease healer and a regular healer. Um, so she, her job is going to be to just help try to keep um, wounds to a minimum. Um, I, I like having in the Pokemon mod, right, all nations get, get these nurses, um, and they're all the same, but I like having a nurse basically on every uh, fort, and a nurse on every army. And it, in the mid to late game, when I have multiple bigger armies in the mod, I tend to have multiple nurses, right? To try to um, get rid of as many wounds and diseases as possible every turn. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. 
Um, what else? Basically, I think we just ping the different cities here. So what's happening in Impassable Mountains? We are recruiting that nurse and then we're recruiting some Mareeps because most of our money has gone elsewhere. Um, but basically, uh, we're starting to get a couple of Mareeps up um, into Flappies. Uh, we're getting a little bit of base. Once a Aeola um, gets a bit more experience, she's her leadership's going to boost up. Right, so then we're going to have the option of putting 140 units in with her, um, and that'll be pretty helpful. Uh, so we're going to aim to do that. Uh, but she is now entering into the... Uh, let me make sure. So she was on... So yeah, so she is entering into the Pokey High School. So she's going to be 8 experience per turn. Um, these Flaffies are going to hit... Uh, Ampharoses in less than 10 turns. Uh, so it's lit literally going to be um, uh, the factory coming online at this point. And we're going to get to that point to where we're trying to push as many Mareeps into the factory, both here, um, probably in Kunal, and probably in Viridian City, that we have to be a little more particular about how we do that with these two. So things are coming online. Um, what are we jumping to? Let's jump over to Viridian City because it's kind of next in line. We've sent the boots over there. Um, oh, um, everything else that's happening in Impassable Mountains is basically just research, right? Um, except we are sending out Irma uh, because she is an air mage and she's going to go behind uh, Vena basically to all of the different locations and search for site search for air. Okay. Uh, so back over to Viridian City. We have moved the Earth Boots over here. We're casting Rock High School, so we're going to get a Rock High School up and going here, which is great because we have a whole bunch of units over here that could really benefit from getting some more experience, especially most of these Prodigies, which once we get these Prodigies up and into... Again, I'm, I am trying to avoid the whole uh, over-abuse of the Blue Belts, and I'm trying to use the black belts instead. Um, so what we're trying to do there is we're trying to get all of these guys trained up. And once these 40 are trained up, they're probably going to go out with Robodan. And we're probably going to you know, start striking out with them as well. But in the meantime, we want to get other things trained up if we can as well. So that's part of the plan there. Uh, in fact, actually, as I do that, let's stop. Oh, I can only get one. Um, okay. It's more important for us to have the research initially, but next turn we're probably going to try to get some Black Belt Commanders so that we can get uh, at least two EVs going in Viridian City as well. Okay. Um, and then we're not really doing much else. We're patrolling because we can't enter a school yet. We're preaching. Um, and Robodan, we kind of flip things around, right? Robodan can't wear the boots, so he couldn't cast the Build Rock High School. So instead, he is entering the, uh, Team Rocket HQ to summon more units. Rinse, repeat, right? Over here, we have Denya and Vikasa moving around in sight searching. We have Ekis, uh, is grabbing some Mareeps, and he's heading back to Viridian City. And that's pretty much it over in Viridian City. Up in Kunal, we're doing a bunch of similar stuff right we are recruiting some uh rubies so that we have some flying stealthy uh spies going on okay and then we have actually here and then we have um some what else are we doing we are doing uh some preaching still we're patrolling because again, we don't have the Rock High School, but after this turn, right, we're going to send the boots on over here to Juna, and Juna is going to be able to put up a Rock High School in Kunal. Um, and rinse and repeat. Anfar is a, a very useful mage. He's got uh, water and air, so he's actually, and so is Talion. Uh, water and air, so we're going to start getting some water site searching over on this side of our empire, empire as long as, as, along with some air site searching. So we're trying to be really good about the site searching that we have going on, etc. Um, 
Anfar is moving for another reason, though. Anfar is moving to Three Pine Grove because next turn, I think, I am probably going to build a lab here so that I can start recruiting schoolgirls. Um, now, these do have a bit of a upkeep cost that I'm going to have to eat. It's not too crazy. Um, 36 gold per year is not bad. Um, and the initial gold cost is not bad. But I am going to have to watch out. I can't just have 50,000 of these. Uh, but these are astral mages, and they do have a 10% chance for a random of basically everything, uh, except blood. Um, so... I am definitely going to start recruiting these probably nonstop. Um, I don't know that we're going to put a fort up in Three Pine Grove. I'm not sure that they're worth that initially. But once our money factories come online, then we'll definitely consider that as a possibility, right? Um, but initially, we just want to get a couple schoolgirls out and about so that we can sight search in Astral, and we want to start fishing for decent randoms, right? Getting anything that is Astral and almost anything else is going to be potentially useful, right? Um, so, and, and not even, not only just that, but like we, we have a very nice stockpile of some gem types, right? We are getting a whole lot of fire gems. We're getting a whole lot of water gems. Um, so that's really good. Uh, we might be able to empower someone in fire or water. Um, we have options, right? Uh, but we don't have options unless we start recruiting them. So first, we got to build a lab. Second, we we'll start recruiting some schoolgirls, and we go from there. And then after that, Anpar can start site searching and doing other stuff. So, um, I think. Back to Cianwood City is really the last thing we have. Vin is still out sight searching. I'm going to be out sight searching for pretty much forever. Um, so back to Cianwood City where all the action happens. What do we got going on? We have a bunch of units that we are training up. Um, we are getting a couple of like... Uh, we've got some interesting stuff going on here, right? Like we have the... We are getting a steady stream of these sacred furrets and radicates so we're kind of building up a little bit of a scenario there we're actually getting a fair chunk of sacred charmanders i still have to figure out what's going on with this meteorite guard i'm not sure where it came from so we're still trying to keep an eye on this this charmander is not going to promote this turn but they will the turn after that so i'm going to try to really take a look and and make sure that something's not up there right um same with this Charmander, I think, honestly. So, uh, we're going to keep an eye on that type of stuff, and we're going to go from there. This, I just, this Fero just turned, or from a Spiro into a Fero, and I got to say, I'm really not impressed. We've got 10 hit points on a Fero, like, no protection, very mediocre stats, right? Um, nothing really special as far as, like, abilities go or anything like that. And then you have Drill Peck, which is decent, right? It's got a decent length, and it's magical. It hits okay com with compared to the stats that he has, right? And then he's got Fury Attack, which is a three attack. So, like, eh. Decent map move, I suppose, but, like, very, very underwhelming, honestly. Um, compared to what, like, I would hope a Fero would be, you know? Um, kind of, kind of meh. So, um, we're also considering getting some, uh, so this, we need a temple here, or we would need a temple to get Pidgeys, which I kind of am interested in doing, right? So that I can have some flying sacreds. But also, if I build a temple here, I can get some uh, Grunt Acolytes. And these I don't care so much about, as except for the fact that they are defense organizers. So having a couple of these running around and boosting up my defense. And they're pretty cheap, right? They're, uh, they're 35 gold and they're 14 gold per year, right? So almost a little over a single gold per month, right? Um, and we can knock a couple of them out pretty quick. 
because you know it's it's one commander point and we don't even have to build a temple or a, a, a board or anything like that so it's one per turn so we could get a couple out and moving around pretty fast so we might build a temple i really want to focus on getting the lab first and i don't have the money to do both definitely not um, but I'm considering putting out a temple in Kodakar pretty quickly. Okay, um, anything else? Anything else really happening? Uh, we're trying to finish our recruitment of our Nexima champion. We really want another uh, uh, Holy Three, basically. Uh, we want another leader. We're going to have Construction 6, not this turn, but next turn. So... After that, our our construction options are going are going to widen greatly, and we're gonna get basically we're gonna do a whole bunch of lightless lanterns. Our research is probably gonna explode, um, and in theory, the game takes off from there. We'll see. Um, we've got to figure out our magic paths, though. We have a couple of options because of people like Venna um our double venas right uh but other than that our 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 options for casting are so limited outside of like really finding ways to boost up our paths because all we really have in in spades is earth um chuck the two venas and our god are going to be kind of like the uh ways around that but um I don't know. We, we we've got a. I kind of wanna. I kind of want another fucking luck um, option. Oh, um, hmm. Fire. Oh, we can't do anything fun there. Okay. Never mind. Um. So the plan. The plan continues. Um. And that's pretty much it. Uh. That's the turn. Uh. We've got a bunch of plates up in the air. We've got the uh, the Ampharos factories, right? We've got these schoolgirls potentially coming online. We've got all of the schools in general coming online, right? Our experience factories coming online. Uh, and we've got the big old army rolling into Saffron City territory. So, um, fingers crossed, hopefully things go well versus olivine there's a couple of ideas i have as far as options for what we could potentially do um interestingly right we've got a couple of people like we've got some assassins but uh more specifically i'm looking at people like uh these black belts right um because they've got pretty high strength uh, and they're flyers, we can put things like Blades of Sharpness on these guys, which we can produce very, very cheaply. And we can we can turn these into kind of um, interesting assassins. Right? Well, not assassins, but like interesting um, anti-thugs, right? Because they can bless themselves, and our bless is decent, right? Um, it's a decent defensive bless. Uh... But we can make very cheap gear for them, right? Um, and then have them kind of just go... Have like two or three of these guys fly into a, um, into a province uh, and then try to bushwhack a Steelix, you know? Like, come in swinging with a bunch of like... Uh, anti-armor weaponry basically and try to cut it down real quick um i don't know that that's gonna work but it is an option right like and it's a it's a pretty simple option compared to some of the stuff that we might have to do for different things um okay i think that is it we've uh we've thrown out a couple of uh different options we're also probably uh next turn when we send out this nurse to meet up with chuck we're probably going to send her with the cauldron of broth uh just to kind of get that out into the field and make sure that chuck's army doesn't run into any supply issues um so and we might have her take the shiny machops along with them because they're not really they're they're the least of my concerns as far as like 
uh, getting into the training, right? I really want the Mareeps. Um, and once we get a bunch of Growliths, right? Like I might have like a little Arcanine squad that we roll around with as well. But um, okay, uh, I've been yammering on for too long at this point. Um, really excited to be back into this game. Really excited to see where some of this goes. Um, I'll see you all next time. Peace.